I'm Andrew Carson Stevens, an academic GP at Cardiff University, and I am leading Wales's contribution to the OECD programme called the Patient Reported Indicator Survey Programme, or the Paris Programme for short. Today I will be joined via video by Mr Anthony Tudor, a patient and lay participant with vast experiences of the design and conduct of service evaluation and research. Paris is an international research programme coordinated by OECD, which stands for the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development. Now, to bring us all onto the same page, the OECD is an international organisation that works with governments, policy makers and citizens to establish evidence based international standards and find solutions to a range of social, economic and environmental challenges, inclusive of healthcare. The OECD contributes a respected leading role internationally in being the knowledge hub for data and analysis, exchange of experiences, best practice sharing and advice on public policies and international standard setting. The objective of the Paris programme is to support the creation and collection of state of the art internationally comparable data to advance high performing people centred health systems. And one of the major outcomes of the programme will be the creation of the first international survey of patient reported health outcomes and experiences of adults with one or more chronic conditions who are treated in primary care settings. This will fill a critical information gap in primary care by asking about aspects like access to healthcare and waiting times, as well as quality of life, pain, physical functioning, psychological well-being. And I'll expand on this later. Through Wales's participation in the OECD Paris programme, there's an opportunity to improve the performance and person-centredness of primary care services by accelerating and standardising the monitoring of what and how patients tell us about their experiences and their perceived outcomes of care, offering really an unprecedented opportunity to benchmark the results of health systems and to promote international collaboration about best practices and effective strategies to support people-centred care by learning with and from other countries and gaining from efficiencies and cost savings by sharing the costs for the development, testing and validation of tools. The development and implementation of the Paris survey will have the technical support from an international consortium shown here, specialised in research on primary care, patient experiences and outcome surveying. And Wales as a delegate of the working party to the Paris programme has helped shape the specifications for the consortium. And we are contributing now into the content and design of the survey, as well as planning where and how to pilot the survey in Wales next year. Whilst the design and improvement of healthcare services benefits from many existing and diverse forms of data, there is little information available about the impact of healthcare services upon the people served beyond data like readmissions to hospital, complications and deaths. And there's a strong need to assess healthcare outcomes from the perspective of the people served. And this is key to learning how well health services strategically deliver their ultimate objective, supporting people in regaining and sustaining their health and well-being. A Healthier Wales sets out the need for services to transform so they can meet the challenges of the future and help deliver the best results. And the related value-based healthcare agenda serves to make a substantive contribution to these visions. Wales's value-based healthcare successes is already recognised by organisations like OECD as being innovative and the beacons of new, flexible and smarter ways of providing services, making best use of existing resources and delivering on the outcomes that matter to people. Now, the validated survey developed by the Paris programme stands to be a key part of our data-driven system in Wales, rich with timely information to and from citizens, their clinical teams and organisations to inform decision making. 
Patient reported outcome measures are in use for some conditions, such as hip and knee surgery, but different measures and methods in different countries make international comparisons difficult. Moreover, the most rapidly growing group of healthcare users are seldom asked about their outcomes and experiences. And these are people with one or more chronic conditions who are managed in primary care settings. Management of long-term conditions represents well in excess of 50% of GP consultations in primary care alone. In January 2017, health ministers of OECD member countries asked the OECD Health Committee to lead an effort to develop and analyse cross-country comparative measures of patients' own experiences of medical care and healthcare outcomes. The OECD recognised several patient reported experience measures already existed internationally, included those already collected by OECD and reported in their Health at a Glance publications, but coverage and comparability was limited. Similarly, whilst a number of problems existed, particularly for hospital based procedures in a selection of countries, the existence of multiple concurrent initiatives risked missing the opportunity for international comparison. Perhaps a greater concern, PROMs were noticeably absent from the fastest growing area of healthcare need and spending, the routine care for people with chronic conditions. Therefore, OECD, their Paris programme, has two streams of work, shown here in blue, where patient reported indicators such as PROMs and PREMs that already exist the first work stream supports countries to accelerate the adoption and reporting of validated, standardised, internationally comparable patient reported indicators. And three international working groups started in early 2018 to discuss instruments, questions, scales containing multiple questions, measuring outcomes from the patient perspective, their definitions and data collection strategies for breast cancer, hip and knee replacements and mental health. And then there's Workstream 2, shown here in green, which addresses the need to understand the outcomes and experiences of people with one or more chronic conditions and will importantly develop the international survey. The survey created by the Paris programme will permit policymakers to monitor and identify priority issues for action to improve the current situation. Experience and outcomes can be tracked over time and considered in terms of specific characteristics such as age group, sex, education level, occupational status, household composition, health risk behaviours and level of multi-morbidity, disease status and so on. This is the conceptual overview of the different areas the Paris survey will cover. It will help us to answer key questions like, what are the patient reported outcomes of care for adults with chronic conditions and multimorbidity in terms of overall health status, physical health status, mental health status and social health status? What are the experiences of care of adults with chronic conditions, such as accessibility in terms of the quality of the communication between care providers, shared decision making with care providers, care continuity and coordination, comprehensiveness of care and safety and trust. Also, how do key characteristics of primary care delivery relate to the outcomes and experiences of adults with chronic conditions? What's the actual questions and measurement tools that will be used in the Paris survey are currently undergoing selection by international expert consensus. I still want to give you a sense of the kinds of questions to expect to be answered and where specific comparisons could likely be made. We will shortly see a video recorded by Anthony Shooter, my close colleague, who has been a patient and lay co-applicant on multiple research projects. And we reviewed the existing draft of the survey together and he identified questions that resonated with the challenges he felt he faces to feel like he is receiving the care he should receive. Anthony's going to reflect on the three questions shown here. Now we will hear from Anthony.
Hello, I'm Anthony Tudor. I live in the south of England near Brighton. I'd like to share with you my experiences and those of the people that I've met along the way. I live with a dozen long-term health conditions under five different health consultants. I want to focus on how three of my long-term conditions are managed. Now, this might highlight the risks of poor and miscommunication between my GP my endocrinologist, my cardiologist, and my renal doctor. About two years ago, my endocrinologist put me on endapamide for my osteoporosis, which is caused by my kidney condition. This caused me to develop hyperkalemia, which uh, gave me some really unpleasant heart symptoms, and I landed up in hospitals. Uh, when I came out of hospital, I was on potassium replacement therapy. Uh, and, but even with that, I had still had trips to A&E. And each time it's been with arrhythmia and each time it's been because of my low potassium levels. The way I understand it is that one drug uh, is counteracting uh, another drug and that ex exacerbates the effect of the others and as a result I suffer. I began to think that perhaps stopping my endapamide treatment could be better for me and I wondered what other treatments there were but communication between my doctors is restricting this. Some would say perhaps I'm being harmed each time I develop arrhythmia from this. The risk is this could be fatal, or one time it could be fatal. The, the reoccurring communication breakdowns between my doctors could very easily put my health at risk. No one clinician is really coordinating my care, and it's me that keeps everyone updated. My GP is really helpful, but I live with these conditions 24-7 and I need support and I don't always get or I don't always feel as supportive as I could be. Why do I believe patient reported indicator surveys could help? Well, if I was completing these surveys regularly, my doctors would have the data that they could track over time. They would know if my breathing or my asthma was gradually declining or whether my pain was getting worse, and they would have objective evidence of this. If I and people like me with multiple long-term conditions consistently rated that they don't feel supported, then maybe our GP practices would reflect on that and consider how they could support us better to manage our conditions. For example, maybe the case could be made to fund a practice nurse to support the most complex patients to look at the data and to give people a ring when they think there's a problem. One of the big problem areas for patients is getting appointments. Some people are just not as savvy as others or they don't know the ins and outs of the system. They are victims of a complex, messy system just because they don't hit the dial a hundred times to get an appointment. They may even be put off going because of the difficulty getting an appointment. And when they do really need to go, and when they do decide to go, they have to wait potentially weeks or even months to be seen. The service that enabled GP practices to work in a more agile way could help detect those at risk of being, of, of being harmed in this way. I think patient reported indicated surveys could be a very valuable thing. Thank you for listening. Anthony really does highlight there the opportunity at a GP practice level, potentially at a cluster level, maybe, and certainly at a national level, how we could use these data to identify signals, signals for improvement, where we can, with curiosity, try and understand from the patient's perspective 
where and how we can improve the system to improve their experiences as well as their outcomes. In closing, the Paris programme is an international programme with potentially up to 20 countries collaborating and inputting. It's unique in giving power to patients with chronic conditions to offer information on how they're experiencing primary care services. This is data which we, in common with many other countries, have historically lacked for the primary care sector. Using these data to monitor and identify priorities exists at multiple levels based on the sampling approach that we will use. But data-driven chronic disease management stands to maximise preventive rather than reactive care efforts. This really is a big opportunity for Wales and it is a big opportunity for the countries collaborating in the OECD Paris programme. Thank you very much.